I want to take the value activities of a company, yeah. what does a company do? For example, technology, production, logistics, marketing and support on one axis and confront this with the values that my customer want, the design, quality, speed, image and service, then I could get an interesting answer. Yeah. What will it look like? This is what my company does. Technology, production, logistics, marketing and support. This is what my customer wants. Design, quality, speed, image and service. But also remember that sacrifice is also important. So maybe I call it price. Uh, the other four sacrifices are very ignored depending on whatever model I have. But the idea is now trying to convert the model into a tool. How can we use that model in our thinking? So if I were to do this and I say, okay, we are going to make uh, we are manufacturers of pens, all sorts of pens and inks, and that is the company. Okay. Let me see. So let's describe the company a little bit in detail. It's a company that has its own technology. They can work around the links. Uh, they have a good lab. They have a very good understanding of how pens work, and they've been in the business for 10 years. They have uh, production, yes. Uh, their own facility is into logistics, marketing and support, but they are only basic lead in marketing. And they sell very much more in the North India, in South they don't have really presence. And these guys invite you as a consultant to their company or as a, as a team member and say, can you please help us? They say, what is your problem? He says, there are two problems actually. One is that the Chinese are bringing in the pens much cheaper, so we are facing a lot of problems on the cost side. We are not able to compete in our market that is going down. Our existing customers are always asking us to bring down the price or to get business. And the other thing is that we think that uh, we are finding it difficult, of course, to, to do that cost part of it. But, you know, my son has joined the business and he's very keen that we do something in Expo. So I also want to meet at the Expo. It's a real story of how uh, a consulting assignment would work. In People export not because they like to export or something, but because the son or the wife, somebody wants to tell them. It will. The way it works, you know. The way it works in SMB is all over the world. Or you say, oh, my cousin is in Canada, why do you export it? So a lot of women are buying soups here and selling in Canada, and then she, the wife there is becoming a business woman. Nothing wrong with it. It's enterprise at the end of the day. What is wrong is if you don't understand that fully, then you don't be like that. So here's this company that calls you and says, can you help me? They say, okay. Let's, you want to go export good, where do you want to export? That would be my question. They said, oh, it doesn't matter. I can export anywhere. Which is right from his perspective. It's completely wrong from a business perspective. Why? So that is the kind of explanation I would do there. I would say, how would you like to be treated? And I do normally an exercise which I didn't do before today. But how would you normally be treated? If I said, you are a customer sitting in Germany, you are getting a product from a company that doesn't care where the product is. He says, can you measure it? Now, the, how would the German customer feel about this? Vis-a-vis -a, -vis a company that says, I will make pens for the German market. For people who are in academic institutions, who use a lot of pens, who want to be sure of the kind of color they are getting out of it, who don't want it to leak because sometimes the professor is carrying it in a own pen. Yeah. Oh. Even if the cap is left open, it won't dry. That is the market segment that I want to cater. Now the moment he says this, obviously we see sparkles in your eyes. Because this is something that the business can do. So I would treat it not as an export market, but as a market segment that you want to do. So my first exercise would be saying, there's nothing called an export market. Forget it. You're going to waste your money. You see what a lot of companies are doing. They say, oh, you want to export? There is a stationary fair happening in France. Why don't you send your son there so he will make two shabby posters? It will be a nice, decent company because they will decide at the last minute to go to the trade fair. Yeah, because somebody has not decided whether to go or not to go. Last minute they will get some subsidy from some government department. They will carry two posters because they don't want to pay extra baggage. You know? And then they carry the posters, go sit in this very nice stationary fair for two days or three days, waste a lot of money. In my opinion, because when they are sitting there, nobody comes to the store. Because the store doesn't look best. People want to buy from the best store. You don't have the time or the money or the energy to spend on it. So you make it was better not to go in my mindset. 
Anyway, you went there. And then when you're sitting there, somebody walks into the store and says, Oh, okay, I want to talk to you about it. You make this kind of pencil. Good. I am from uh, Algeria. Would you like to export to me? Yes, of course we can export to you. So what kind of pencil do you make? Oh, you make all kinds of pens. You tell me what you want. And you would find that the guy will walk with Because as customers, we don't want to buy anything from somebody who makes all kinds of things. Unless you are a Unilever or something, that's good. Yeah. I want to talk to people, especially in a B2B fair like that, where I'm a bulk buyer, I want to talk to people who specialize in this. So, okay. So we would bring it down to a market segment. Or let's say we also have a domestic market. Let's say you're going all the way to France to sell the pens. How much do you sell in the Bangalore, Chennai, or whatever region? Oh, we don't sell anything. Why? Oh, we don't have good dealers. Why don't we have good dealers? Oh, we never look at the sales. Okay, so why don't we also look at a domestic market? Could be an example. What I will do with the team, which means the team of somebody who represents their production, somebody who represents their R&D or technology or design centers, somebody who represents their purchasing, somebody who represents their marketing, somebody who represents maybe general management, maybe the CEO, they all sit together, six, seven, eight people are sitting in the room, and I tell them a simple thing. Okay, now imagine that here is a market, domestic market. This is a guy who is, uh, who has the stationary sales contract for 500 schools in South India. Yeah. And this is your one. So I put that guy's name, hypothetical name on the top. Why? Because I want this group to imagine the customer values of that kind of a buyer. His own values for why he buys it and the value of the people who are finally going to use this pen. The college or the school or whatever. Imagine if you are buying what it is. And if you can't imagine, do a survey. You would normally do a survey and say, hire a consultant or go yourself, look at someone's people. Or if you're 20 years in the business, you know what it is. Especially think of things that might be different from a North Indian buyer. You'd say, well, how can a North Indian buyer of pens be different from a South Indian buyer? Or you'd be surprised. Maybe the colors they, they want to see are different. You know that, that ad that failed? That's just, I think it was Hero, you know who that story? I don't know how accurate my story is, but I heard something like this. So, Hero had an ad and when they were going to make a South India push with one of their bikes, they chose, I think it was Saif Ali Khan and uh, they chose uh, Karina or someone as their brand ambassadors and they were the two who were riding the bike. And they figured that uh, sales were not picking up in the South. But they did a survey, they found that because in the South, they want a hero who's uh, got a mustache, first of all. Yeah, he should look like a South Indian hero. Probably a little pot belly is okay. You know? It doesn't have to look as muscular and as uh, effeminate as Saif Ali Khan was in those days. And they want a woman who's, uh, as we would call, has meat on the bones. She should be a little uh, weighty, if I may say. Can't be as skimpy and skinny as Karina. So actually that ad bomb, they changed it. If you look at the next time they did the ad, they did it exactly with that kind of characters. I forget what they were. So sometimes the people we associate with are also different. Now obviously if I want to sell something to a group like my son, it's very different from what I would sell uh, would do if I wanted to sell it to my grandfather. Yeah, obviously that. So same thing happens even with something like this. My my sales pitch might do. People in the South believe that people in the North are not as honest. This is something I feel in the business every day. They feel that uh, we do these flashy ads and we talk very nicely, but we don't keep our word. Our commitment is not there. When we say a delivery will reach them, it will always reach them for three days later. If you supply to somebody in the North, the chances you will get a money are less. These are the notions that the world is right or wrong, I don't know. I can't argue against it. So we try to create the brand values around here. <laughs> Similarly in the export market, I choose, I don't know, an Italian market or something like this. And I tell these guys, for example, that here is a market which, uh, let's take an example, which has, uh, so what is the problem with a pen like this? If I leave it open while I'm talking to you, it will dry. So I have to keep reminding myself of keeping it closed, keeping it vertical. If I keep it horizontal for too long, it dries up. If I keep it the other way around, chances are it will not work when I want it to work. Right? And the second thing is that when I, when I use it on the board, it's not always easy to rub off. They say it is erasable, but uh, you know it leaves a mark of the thing unless I use it nicely. Now if I were to come up with a pen, so this company said we are good in technology, and our problem is that costs are low. We are always facing a cost factor. My challenge would be, can you come up with a pen which does something new? Which the others would do? What could it be? It could be that I leave it open, nothing happens to it. 
As a customer, I can tell you what I desire, what I aspire for as a user of You can imagine to be a user of pen pencils. The second thing is if I write something on the board and I leave it for 10 minutes, it should evaporate from its own. I don't have to rub it. I don't. Why should we say it's not possible? If that happens, is there a market? That is the question. So if I say, yeah, of course there's a market. Okay, let's imagine there's a market. So I could do a third scenario. What would be the customer values of a market? So once I begin to get people to think like that, then my question is, okay, now tell me, on a scale of one to five, how strong is our technology in the kind of design that this customer wants? You we know what he wants from a design. So he's a South Indian fire, he wants the pen to look different, he doesn't want it to be flat like this, he wants different colors. Is it possible? That is my question. How good is our company and our resources from a technology perspective to meet with the design? Not only good in technology, how good is our production to be able to meet that design? So, designers say, I can design any color you want, no problem. Production says, no, no, sorry, I can't do it. My suppliers will not support me. I can only do this kind of a scheme. You know, only three colors, nothing else around. So, okay. How good are we in logistics for that South Indian market? How good are we in marketing there? We don't have ad agencies, we have done nothing. How good are we in support for that market? From a design angle, from a quality angle, from a speed angle, Image angle, service angle, that's right. But the challenge is that I will tell the team, no one to five scores are allowed. You are allowed to choose only three scores. Five, three, or one. <coughs> or minus one, minus three, minus five. Why do I do that? Because I want a clear distinction. The human mind is such that the moment I allow you to do one to five, you'll say, sir, actually this is 4.5, this is 4.25, and this is 4.75. We want we like a fuzzy picture. And the whole thing about business I discovered is to be clear and focused. This I will do and this I will not do. Many companies talk of strategy, big statements, and my strategy is What will I not do should be clear to my people. I will not send to people who don't want to build. We have been clear from day one. 90% of our business at that time in capacity we said no. We don't want to do it. So for whatever reason, no more discussions. The team never discusses it. I have never had an excise rate. No tax authority suspects that Vicky is doing something wrong. Because of one statement we make, we don't do that business. So, so many people will try it, many dealers will come to us. Many times they will tell our marketing person, I said, it's business. Sab karte hai, aapko nahi Our boss said, Dimaag karabe, woh nahi Even if that is the answer, it's a very clear answer. Because when it's a clear answer, it helps me a lot. So the clarity is important. So 5, 3, 1, or minus 1, minus 1. And you cannot in any vertical call repeat a number. So if you say that your company is so good, that they can meet the design requirement from a technology perspective. Don't say you're good at everything. Nobody's good at everything. Again, we force you to make a choice. Yes? Is that clear? Support me, can you explain how to how to support analysis? Yeah, there is actually what we call a cheat sheet. There are, there are questions. So what we do is if I do this as a consultant, I will actually give them real questions for each one of them. So for example, if support you would say from a design angle. Uh, the answer the question is very simple. How good is our company? In, in order to be able to answer customers' requests for special designs. Yeah, that means, how much can we support? How good are we at being able to support design failure answers or modifications in design? That's the thing. So, in some businesses, like in this, you say this is a simple question. If it's not relevant, leave it also. That's also possible. But in some businesses, you'll find that you can score only because you're supposed to. In my football counting business, uh, basically, we, we made a counter. The story is very simple. It, uh, the old ones look like uh, the infrared stands. So any door you walk in, there will be two stands on the side. If you walk into an arena, you will still see them there. They are shooting out infrared rays, which you can't see because the human eye can't see. When you walk out, so there's a ray A, a ray B. If I cross A and B, I will count it in. If I cross B and A, I will count it out. It makes this count. That is very simple. Why? Because we think every shop should know how many people are coming. Now because it also has a timer, it knows when the person is coming. So between 9.5 and 9.10, how many people came in, I can count. I mean, I can count every minute or every second, actually. But what we do is, this is good information, but we think that the retail editor's guy, what is the useful information? What will he pay for? What is the benefit, the value of their customer? Is if he can get this information. So I went first day to send to them, and they said, so what is the big deal about it? We have a security guard, he's sitting accounting. Why should we invest in a machine? Very good, sir. Now can you tell me, how good is Diwali that's just gone compared to the Diwali last year. Do you have that information? 
in terms of number of people who came to your store. Makes sense. Yeah, you have a point, but if I like, I can dig out that information. How will you dig it out? Oh, it's in a register. So I said, okay, I challenge you, I'll come back after a week. Can you get me that information? And when I come back after a week, I'll ask you the same question about Christmas. Then you will take another week to answer that. How good is the information that you will get after a week? So, okay, I see your point. So, okay. So, the customer wants information at the click of a button. If he could feed two questions into his computer and get an answer, how good is this Diwali compared to last Diwali? That is the answer that he wants. That is what he wants to pay for. Not for these two stands standing here. Right? So, when I look at value from that perspective, then I put a, uh, a Wi-Fi uh, device on this system, which uses the Wi-Fi modem and sends that information to him through an email. And not only sends it to him, so three parts. One is counting, second is transmitting, and the third part is how we analyze that information. So we have a web analytical tool where he can drag and drop. He says, I want to know from the 1st of 7th of November last year to the 6th to 8th of November because the Diwali is week is different this time. How did my stores compare? Which stores? He can click all my North Indian stores or all my South Indian stores. He can compare. Because we put this device everywhere and we do this. This is how it works. So this is this is nice, except that. When we get into details, the Wi-Fi doesn't work in India. So we went into a GPRS model. We can improve in technology. The stands are knocked out by somebody else. The store manager thinks that this count is not a good thing. Boss will get to know how many people are coming. And every monthly meeting he will find a shout at me. So what does he do? He opens a book and puts it on that stand. So no I have been passing stand is useless. He's sitting in Vishaka but now after one month they know it's not working. So the customer says, why am I paying you all this? Finally it's not working, I don't care. So, but every problem can be an answer. So we decided to now, the latest system that we have for the last few years, which uh, more than 2,000 systems are already installed in the market, is something that looks exactly like this PC, you know, the fire detector, the smoke detector, exactly looks like this. It sits in the ceiling, it does a thermal imaging. So we are seeing you through a heat map. So we don't see the body, it's not a video camera, we don't take pictures. We see heat bodies in here. And the good thing is I don't need any stands or anything. I decide on my computer what is the area I want to measure. So I say, if a person comes in from here but goes out here, don't count. I can train the camera to do that. So that's very interesting because then I cut out the people. So like for example, we sold it to Samsung. Many people come to the store with a phone. Suddenly they get a phone a signal. They go out again for a call or uh, enter repair shops are using it now. So the unnecessary people are getting counted. Now this system excludes those kind of people. This is a brilliant system. And what I do is I, I don't use any Wi-Fi because Wi-Fi doesn't work in this country still. Not the way I want it to work. So we use a GPS modem which is like a cell phone put into the system. So that through a SIM card is transmitting information directly to my server, which is a new effect. And then we have a mirror server in India that picks up the information and that does the analysis. And then some 12 mails go, 12 reports go to whoever they have to go to automatically. Every day. Now the whole thing is automated. Now only the marketing needs to be done and the money is coming in every month. So you can get it right. Yeah. But in this system, in this thing, I have started the story of giving you this from a support perspective. Now today what has happened? Another company comes in and says, look, we've got a brilliant system, which actually is even better than my system, it's more expensive. He says, what I want to do is joint venture. Why? He says, because you have spread out all over the country. You have engineers in every city now. And they're giving, uh, within 24 hours, they're repairing systems, uh, they're mobile, and your customers trust you. So my customers are the same customers, but I want to use your installation support. Here. Can you lease it out to them? And so we are trying to look at that whether that's our business model or not. You'll see that. So in a business like that, I would say our support is my best thing. Actually, when we started the business, that is exactly what we did. We said, look, footfall is just one thing. Whatever that store needs, let's lay a pipeline to that store. I should have the people who can go and store, talk to them, who can install and who can serve. Then it doesn't matter. Today he wants this, tomorrow he wants a video camera. Tomorrow Day after he wants a temperature monitor, we'll do that. Fourth day he wants an energy control system, we'll do that. Because now I know how to do it. I have my team there. So you can make each one of these things. So what I'm trying to say is that don't discard it completely. Maybe in the expense example is small. But there can be businesses that only rely on this. Everything else they outsource to somebody else. That's also possible. Yes? Okay. So, We don't, we make only to order, so we don't have so much. But in some cases, yeah, we we'll give it away to the market or something. Okay, so, so what I would do is put the customer values here, put the what the, the value that you can create as a company here, 
and ask them to ask, answer this question in 5, 3, 1. Or if you say, you know, what you are saying is very good, very interesting. For the Italian market, uh, solvent-free pen, for example, which disappears, ink disappears after 10 minutes on its own. Fantastic idea, sir. But our design or technology is not capable of doing that. Give it a minus five. But you might be very excited about it, but we will see what to deal with that. And then we would use this, so this is just how you do it. What it will look like is something like this. Then I will total up those scores. When I total them up, I will bunch it up as some green areas where you've got high scores and some red areas where you've got poor scores. And what do these what this indicate to me is that the green areas are the focus areas where your company is strong, focus on those, and these are the challenges. If you want to go to this market, this particular segment, you have to solve this. Yeah? And you can solve it in two ways. So if my challenge was, for example, logistics, I can either put a logistics team if it is solvable by me, or if I'm going to the south, I don't have white wise to a team, I can put a logistics service provider this network. Somebody who already has this network, and I can form an alliance with yeah. So my challenge can either be these fields, especially in small and medium enterprise, we don't do that enough. Large companies do this all the time. A company as big as Airtel decided that while they are so big and they are going to be into business of millions of consumers, their back end or the service support must be handled by IBM. So they were the first company to outsource such a big deal. But a small company like mine said, no, 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 we can't talk to anybody else, it's a secret. We must do it ourselves. We must invent it, we must make it, we should test it, we should sell it, we should recover the money for it, we should install it, we should service it, we should support it. Everything I want to do is that's a big mistake. Yeah. The idea is that you form a strategic alliance with somebody to be able to do this. Yeah. If the challenge is, like in the previous case, the challenge was that uh, the people will not look at this as an environmentally friendly technology, whatever the example is. Then I will hire a responsible business consulting firm on put in the systems and give me the certificates to make sure that I do. On the focus side, we are basically able to see that if it's a good connect, that you will see a very nice light called the product market company. Yeah, so from a pen maker who is suffering cost problems, I become somebody who makes the pen which is automatically evaporating. And I will know exactly which markets will buy that. I will sell it at a high price because this is a value deal. Cost is not a big issue. And I could you start using my technology. And I may not do this 100%. I'm not saying stop what you're doing and start doing only this. Put 5% of the resources to that. Maybe 10% of the resources. Maybe in three years later you'll realize that this has become 30-40% of the business. Good luck. And similarly, so in that, okay, so the, the combination I find is a high-tech quality product with a high-end market set. Maybe that's what I'm choosing to do. This is just a generic example, but of course, uh, time doesn't allow us to get into real examples, but there are several. And a strategic allowance can then look like this. So this is the final consumer I want to go to. As one business, I am good on technology, some part of the technology I like. I am very good at production, but my logistics is lousy. For example, my capacity, if I start doing it in Mexico. I know my technology, my production is great, but my logistics for Mexico are useless. So, my marketing, and nobody knows that in Mexico, and I can't give any support in Mexico. So what would I do? Form a strategic alliance with somebody in Mexico. What kind of a guy who has little technology, who has no production, but becomes my logistics, marketing and support, I form an alliance with. Maybe it's like a vendor, but we have to do more. So, okay, I'll pay you a monthly, but you give me an inventory, a warehouse, you pick up the goods from the port, bring them here, send it to the customers. But I will try to go to somebody who also has a knowledge of marketing, who knows those customers, who's already dealing with those customers. Yeah, and that's a way to enter into I don't have to do everything myself, but I have to know what I can't do. When I don't know that value picture, and I have a false arrogance about I can do everything. Then I will be involved. And that is why the minus 5, minus 3 tells me from my team level what we are good at and what we are good at. And obviously the customer value will change for each segment and then the answers will be same. Yeah. You might have some segments where you say this is a no We have too many minuses, too many challenges, forget it, we can't do it. And there will always be. Taking capacitors for NASA is an example of a no If I put NASA's customer values there, when will they buy a capacitor? What kind of design do they want? What kind of quality are they looking for? We will fail. Because we are not 
have designed for ourselves. Do I want to do that? That's a discussion we have done from business angle. Is the segment big enough? Um, is my aspiration big enough? Do I want to do this? Is it profitable? If yes, then I would make an action plan or a strategic advancement. If you have to do that, maybe we'll hire um, or, or join hands with a technology company sitting in the US who already deals with us, who deals with many other components but not in the past. I produce, sir, you give me the technology. You tell me what you want. What kind of quality standards you want. We do that. Yeah. Similarly, in some other cases, like we told you in the government cases, you can have production or logistics. Several, several ways of doing it with the line system. And value analysis is what I call them. So I told you about jobbing. Yeah. Give me the shirt, give me the cloth, I will cut it, stitch it, put the buttons you give me, and give it to you as a bag. That is what we call jobbing. You pay me 20 rupees per shirt. I use labor arbitrage. Unfortunately, many businesses are still stuck there. In Mexico, they call them maquillas. Same word. Basically, sweatshops. Or you can call it floor manufacturing. Yeah? Every time your car passes, you give me 20 rupees. Similarly, every time your goods pass through my factory, give me 20 rupees. I will do what I have to do. But I can be a little better. I say, no, no. I can do custom or poor manufacturing. Especially for your design. Or I will license manufacturing. You give me the technology, power. And I will play in the tablets of the new factory. But it's also a private label. You give me the technology, but I will put my label. In India, they will be known as Deki Capacitor. Maybe in the world, they are known as whatever, uh, Koshiba. Yeah, Koshiba. It's happening in medicine a lot. Franchising or programming could be another one. Where I give you the full technology, McDonald's. I don't only give you the logo, I don't only give you how it looks, I give you the recipes, I give you the food. I teach your people how to do it, you give me the space, you put the money in. Another one. Yeah. Or clustering, several supporters. So we need to decide which one of these would work best for us. Now, from there, because we have only about 10 15 minutes left, this call will be very quickly to what we are doing in the industry. So I have already given you a flavor of what we are doing. Uh, but like I give you all these examples already. Uh, that was from 10 million to 15 million for an hour, 40. And this whole business became zero duty in 2005. 